What's it like to go to the University of Oxford? Stick around and find out today on this episode of Navigating Academia. What's up, everybody? My name is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh, Oxford DPhil, and I want to warmly welcome you to this episode of Navigating Academia, your leading source for guidance on how to advance your career in academia. As always, I appreciate the love, so please do take a moment right now to like and share this video with your friends, with your colleagues, with your students, anybody who may be considering going or applying to Oxford, share this with them. Subscribe to our channel and be sure to comment below. You can follow us at these social media accounts. So, today we're going to be jumping in and talking about what it's like to go to one of the most prestigious research universities in the world, the University of Oxford. With evidence of collegiate teaching going all the way back to 1096 AD, Oxford is the oldest university in the English-speaking world that has been continuously providing instruction. It, it is really a magical place. Uh, I still remember when I was a kid growing up, my father's from India, and so instead of us hearing about Harvard and Yale and Princeton and all these other U.S. universities, we would always hear about Oxford and Cambridge and, you know, being an Oxonian, meaning that you're somebody who graduated from Oxford, etc. It was just seen as incredibly prestigious, and, uh, and it was something where, for me, I never thought I was going to be an Oxford guy. I can tell you that right now. When I was an undergrad up in Boston here in the United States, uh, for me, I decided that I was going to take a one year break in between undergrad and going to get my doctoral degree in clinical child psychology. I was gonna take that break to be able to go and live abroad for a year. So when I was thinking about it, you know, I did college, I did undergrad in three years here in the US, usually, usually it's four years. And so because of that, I said, I wanna study abroad maybe. Maybe I can find like a one year master's degree somewhere. Uh, and I ended up finding an MSc, so a master's in science, degree in psychiatry at Oxford. And I just thought that this would be the coolest thing. So I ended up applying for a Rhodes Scholarship, ended up being a finalist for that, and then said, okay, you know, if I can still go to Oxford, let's kind of get this done. And was super lucky, got accepted, and was able to go. While I was there, I ended up staying for the DPhil, so for the doctorate in psychiatry with a focus on forensic psychiatry, specifically the area of forensic risk assessment, where we predict the likelihood of future violence. Totally didn't expect it, fell into the thing completely. Uh, it was really quite the experience to be able to go there. And what I would say in terms of three different aspects of what your experience would be like if you did go to Oxford, those are the three things that I wanna focus on in this video today. So let's talk about those. So the first aspect is going to be your college. Now Oxford is composed of literally dozens of colleges. Now let's say that you're from the US, for instance, you're used to that collegiate system. When you hear the term college, you may think to yourself, isn't that synonymous? Isn't a college and a university, isn't that the same thing? Well, when you go to Oxford, like I said, there's dozens of individual colleges. Within the University of Oxford, uh, there are a variety of literally physical campuses within the city proper. Think about like New York University, where like the whole city is the campus. Kind of similar, but you know, when you look at photos in all of Oxford, you usually see all these really old looking buildings and this kind of stuff. These are the individual colleges. The idea is almost like within the university, you got all these little tribes, and the tribes have their own resources, and they have their own expertise. So for example, let's say you're really into politics, well then you may want to go to Christchurch College, which is where a lot of scenes in Harry Potter were filmed. Uh, for me, I want to go to one of the oldest colleges, so I went to University College, which is called Unit. Uh, and one of the big focuses there was kind of on social life. Each one of these different colleges has their own graduate common room. Uh, so it's the GCR, graduate common room. If you're an undergrad, you've got your own common room. Uh, and there, you know, you find board games and TVs and, you know, movies to watch or pool tables, these sorts of things. It's kind of the hangout area. And like I said, all the colleges have these. And sometimes you know, you'll be invited by your friends who are in different colleges to go 
would hang out at theirs. Oftentimes, there's some sort of a pub or a bar that's actually within the college. Many of the colleges have their own library. University College, we had our own library. It was like super old and beautiful and open 24 hours. So it'd be like 5 a.m. in the morning and you'd, you know, wake up or whatever and the sun's first coming out and you go and get a coffee and go in and, you know, it's a pretty magical situation. Um, the, one of my favorite stories is uh, having to do with actually the, the whole pub situation. So the, the story goes like this. So there was a guy, so he was an undergraduate student at Oxford, uh, and you know he goes to the bar, to the pub that's at his college, the day after his exams. He reads for his exams, as they say at Oxford. Uh, and he goes and he brings this really old collegiate book, and he says, look, it says in the college rules that you know with, if I come on the final day, of my exams, then I get a pint, it's like a pint of beer, uh, for only five P, only five pence. And you know, he thinks he's very smug and he looks at this bartender, bartender's like, I don't want to argue with you, here you go, right? And a few days go by and this guy's telling all of his friends about this and all of a sudden he gets a phone call, right? And the phone call is from the president of the college. So he says, I need to see you in my chambers. So he ends up going to the chambers, he's a little bit nervous. So he says, oh, you know, kind of what, what happened here? He said, uh, am I in trouble? And he says, well, actually, you know, you owe me five pounds. He says, five pounds? He says, I only paid 5p for the beer. And so he says, I know, but take a look at this. And he takes out another one of these, you know, college books, from, rule books from hundreds of years ago. And he says, you see what it says here? So the kid reads it and it says that you are not allowed in the college bar without uh, your saber. So like without your sword. And so, oh, he didn't have a sword. So, uh, you know, too bad, so sad. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna work. There's other colleges where I think it's still in the rules that you're allowed to bring livestock. Like you're allowed to bring like one cow, a certain number of cows, which is why if you go to a place like Christ Church, Christ Church Meadow, it's like all these wild cows. They're just like out there. It's really strange, but there are these really strange collegiate rules. Usually you'll also have a college supervisor in addition to a departmental supervisor. So it's a kind of a little support system and a little social network that's built specifically for you. Even though obviously you're gonna have a wider support system and a much wider social circle, it gives you a place to start. So that's really a, a very special part of going to Oxford is your collegiate experience. Aspect number two is going to be your department. So now we've kind of discussed you know, what college life is like, but of course you gotta go to work at some point, right? And so in your department, this is where all the faculty members are going to be. You'll have a supervisor who's there. Uh, there will be labs. You know, Oxford is so well funded in terms of their facilities that you get very high quality facilities. The building that I was in uh, was, uh, uh, donated essentially, money was donated for it by a foundation, uh, the acronym to which is SANE, S-A-N-E, and it was in the Department of Psychiatry. I remember one day walking around the grounds and this clinician who didn't know me, because I was very young, I was 21, came up to me and she's like, do you know where you're supposed to be? And without a second thought, I just pointed at the building, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm insane. And she's like, oh understood okay I'm like what is she talking about but of course she thought that I said I'm insane right so you know these these things happen uh, but you know my department was an interesting place because it was based out of a hospital most of them are kind of downtown somewhere in Oxford mine was up this thing called Headington Hill which was this you know hell of a hill to cycle up and down every day so I ended up taking the bus at the end but I used to cycle up and down the thing total nightmare uh, but your department is going to be your work home just like your college is you know your home home when it comes to places to live especially your first year uh, in terms of graduate school I was required to live on campus like in college first year as they say and then after that I ended up moving in with with roommates and such so but the first year was a really magical time but truly magical I would say and getting to know your department and getting to know the faculty that are in it and your fellow graduate students they call this a cohort your cohort is going to be your family I'm telling you right now uh, my I mean I would would say my family the people that I went to Oxford with who were in my department I'm still in very close contact with 
several of them I've ended up you know writing papers with or starting journals with I mean it's really been amazing to, to watch their trajectory as they've just bounced from success to success so my friend Aisha is watching this Aisha I'm talking to you you're amazing so that's aspect number two aspect number three is your social life Social life at Oxford can take so many different forms. There are an absurd number of extracurriculars. Everything from, you know, judo to cheerleading to trampolining, like professional level trampolining, uh, to chess, to literally anything you can imagine. Or you can even start your own extracurricular. You can start your own club. Of course, they've got things like the Oxford Union, which is where, you know, they bring in speakers, you know, po folks from Game of Thrones or from bands, you know, Bono will come. Hey, it's just crazy stuff. And and there are also a lot of debates. It's kind of where all these massive debates, theological debates, uh, debates of all kind take place. And it's pretty cool. And you get real dressed up to be able to go there. You know, sometimes for some of these social events, you got to wear your subfusk. Subfusk is, uh, yeah, if you Google Oxford outfit, that's probably what you'll see. So uh, for guys, it's like, you know, like a white shirt and white bow tie. Uh, and then you have this like flowing black gown. Uh, you know, it depends on whether you're an undergrad or a grad student or when you get a DPhil, uh, you actually get a really funky gown. It's like a red and blue gown. If you Google Oxford doctor gown, you'll end up finding it. It's pretty cool looking. I literally have mine sitting right over there for another video I'll make for this series. So keep watching so you can see it. Uh, I'll actually make a video for you on how to get into Oxford. I'll link that in the description below. Make sure to watch that one and like it as well. Uh, your social life is also going to be comprised of things that happen at other colleges, not just yours. And so these are things like bops and balls. So a bop is kind of a party that happens. Uh, and really, these guys will kind of cycle. You'll have like a couple of bops per week. And it's, it's a reason to go to colleges at other, sorry, to go to other colleges. Sometimes, often, there's an admission fee. But usually when you get in, there'll be like a free drink. It's always like the cheapest of possible wine uh, or the, you know, the cheapest of all possible beer but trust me, you're not gonna care because uh, it's so much fun and they all have themes around the world. So you dress in, you know, wherever you're from. So as an American, you know, you put together these wild outfits uh, with, you know, fanny packs and, you know, big, you know, number one, you know, hands from baseball games and this kind of stuff. But, but it's a great way to be able to get to know new people. Best thing about BOPS is that people are so outgoing and they want to meet new people. If you do go to Oxford or any uh, school you go to, undergrad or grad school, be sure the first couple of weeks you are immensely social. After that, people kind of click up and they, you know, are more socially isolated. So at first, you want to make sure that you're really kind of putting yourself out there. And there are also not just bops, but also balls, which take place usually once every few years for your college. But there'll be several every year, and they are a big deal. You have big bands like Muse, which is a big band right now. You know, they ended up coming when I was there. Um, and they go all out. It's pretty expensive. It's like a couple hundred pounds to be able to go to some of these sometimes, but... They spare no expense on these things, and it's at nighttime, and all the lights are on, and they transform the colleges, and everybody gets really decked out in terms of what they wear. Pretty phenomenal. I, I definitely, it's definitely worth the money if you can afford to go to some of the things while you're there. Pretty cool. So that's my summary of going to Oxford. It is immensely challenging. It is immensely rewarding. It will set you up for success in your career, but at the same time, it, it will be the most difficult thing you've ever done professionally, I can tell you that. Um, but again, if you're willing to go through that process and it will tear you down, I'm telling you right now, uh, and then it will rebuild you from the ashes of that like a phoenix, uh, going through that process is something that will make you a far stronger person. Uh, to be frank, if you survive it, I know people who have you know, dropped out all the time uh, because it, it really is that difficult. But I want to hear from you in the comments below. Are you thinking about applying to go to Oxford? Have you maybe already gone? Maybe you're an Oxonian. Maybe you can share with us your experience. What are the things that I, that I haven't mentioned that you want to tell other people about? And if you have other Oxford-related videos that you want me to make, please just let me know down in the comments section. And even if you don't have a specific idea, look down in the comments section and give a little thumbs Thumbs up to any of them that you do want me to make and I'll go ahead and work on those for you. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends, with your colleagues, with your students, anybody who's thinking about maybe they're thinking about going to Oxford and follow us on social media. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one career coaching, including my personal guidance, one-on-one -on -one guidance on getting you into Oxford, please do 
contact me via the website below and let's see a consultation call where we can talk about your case uh, and evidence-based practices to maximize the likelihood that you're going to be the next Oxonian watching this video. Signing off everybody, have a great day and remember to get out there, take chances and be your best self. Thank you so much for stopping by everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.